The purpose of this video is to summarize the biblical prophecies concerning Israel, the end times, and how it affects us today. We can change our own future when we consider the prophecies which shall soon be fulfilled. There have been many biblical prophecies fulfilled in the past and have been proven by the evidence of true history. Let us look at the true author of biblical prophecies and try to understand prophecy from God's perspective. Almighty God is the sovereign of the entire universe, and he is a spirit. Almighty God lives and exists in eternity. Somewhere within eternity is a period we call time. Almighty God from within eternity can see and exist in all of time from the beginning to the end of time and then continues to exist in eternity before and after the completion of time. Moreover, he is omnipresent. He exists everywhere at all times. Therefore, one of his names he has called himself is I Am, which means I exist eternally. To define his name a little more correctly, there has never been a time or point in eternity that he did not exist. And there never will be a time or point in eternity that he will stop existing. His existence is eternal. There is no beginning of God and there is no ending of God. There is no beginning of his existence and there is no ending of his existence. He can see and exist in the beginning of time, every point in time, and pass through the end of time. Whatever point in time you are watching this video, he sees you, he exists in that point, and simultaneously he sees and exists in the time of Adam, Moses, Abraham, David. He can see Jesus hanging on the cross and exist there. He sees and exists during the great wars, the millennium, the judgment, and so on. So when Almighty God speaks to a prophet and says something is going to happen, Almighty God has already seen it come to pass. Relative to that prophet, Almighty God has looked forward in time and told his prophet the future event. But relative to Almighty God, he is reporting the true event happening as he is speaking. You can know the future events and change your own future by studying and understanding the true future events that Almighty God has revealed through his prophets and his signs. Now, no one is smart enough to know the mind of God and why he does the things that he does. However, he sends his prophets and miraculous signs to show believers what he is doing. And the mark of a true prophet is that whatever the prophet says will come to pass without error. There's another factor which influences the way we understand prophecy. Almighty God is intentionally invisible to mankind. No man can see his face and live. He requires us to believe in him without seeing him. When a person believes what God says will come to pass, that belief is called faith. Mankind is forbidden to make an image of God to worship, again reminding us that Almighty God is also intentionally invisible to mankind. To remain invisible, he often uses nature to accomplish his will. For example, he tells his prophets that there is going to be an earthquake in the future, an earthquake that will shake the whole world and destroy the enemies of Israel. Now, when that happens, the believers could say it's just a coincidence. The world experiences earthquakes every day. However, as in Ezekiel 38, God tells his prophets many details, which nations will attack Israel, how they will be destroyed, which nations will be burned with fire, and that it will happen after Israel has been restored as a nation. He even tells how many years Israel will be looting the dead armies and where the bones of the dead armies will be buried in Israel. God removes any chance of coincidence by having his prophet write the prophecy down over 2,680-some years before it even happens. As I read the prophecy in Isaiah 66, 7, and 8, I would like for you to remember that the nation of Israel was entirely destroyed when the Roman army led by Titus conquered Jerusalem and destroyed the temple around A.D. 70. The Jewish people were then exiled and dispersed all over the world, yet they continued their national culture and prayed to return to Israel through the centuries. In the first half of the 20th century, there were major waves of immigration of Jews back to Israel from the Arab countries and from Europe. 
During the British rule in Palestine, the Jewish people were subject to great violence and massacres directed by the Arab civilians or forces of the neighboring Arab states. During World War II, the Nazi regime in Germany decimated around 6 million Jews, creating a great tragedy called the Holocaust. However, roughly 2,700 years ago, Almighty God spoke through Isaiah the prophet. In Isaiah 66, 7 and 8, the prophet foreshadowed the rebirth of Israel, which happened in one day. The woman giving birth before going into labor represented Israel. This accurately describes what happened on May the 14th, 1948, when the Jews declared independence for Israel as a united and sovereign nation for the first time in around 2,900 years. During that same day, the United States issued a statement recognizing Israel's sovereignty, and only hours beforehand, the United Nations mandate expired, ending British control of the land. During a 24-hour span of time, foreign control of the land of Israel had formally ceased, and Israel had declared its independence, and that independence was acknowledged by other nations. Modern Israel was literally born in a single day. Isaiah said the birth would take place before there would be labor pains, and that too is precisely what happened. Within hours of the Declaration of Independence in 1948, Israel was attacked by the surrounding countries of Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia. These Arab states jointly waged a full-scale war against Israel. Despite the numerical superiority of the Arab armies, Israel defended itself and won. This is the prophecy in Isaiah 66, 7 and 8 from the NIV. Before she goes into labor, she gives birth. Before the pangs come upon her, she delivers a son. Who has ever heard of such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor then she gives birth to her children. Yes, the labor pain since the birth of Israel continue on today. Israel has been fighting in a number of wars and large-scale military operations since that day of birth. 1948, of course, was the Arab-Israeli War, that War of Independence. And then the 50s and the 60s had the retribution operations. In October 1956, the War of the Suez Canal began, the Six-Day War in June 1967. Then began the War of Attrition from 1967 to 1970. The Yom Kippur War, October 1973. In March 1978 began the South Lebanon Conflict. 1982, the Lebanon War. South Lebanon Conflict, 1982 to 2000. The first Infada, 1987 to 1993. The second Infada, 2000 to 2005. 2006, the Lebanon War. The Gaza War, December of 2008 to January of 2009. And we know that the birth pangs are not over until sometime after the war with Russia and its criminal allies as described in Ezekiel 38 and 39. In summary, Almighty God is eternal. He exists in all points of our time. Our past time is God's present time. Our present time is also God's present time. Our future time is God's present time. He speaks to his prophets and tells them what he wants them to know about the future. When we believe what he says, it is faith. Almighty God is intentionally invisible. He forbids any images made of him, and he often uses acts of nature to complete his will and still remain invisible. He has chosen Israel as his people and Jerusalem as the location of his temple. There are many prophecies concerning Israel and the temple being fulfilled in our generation. Israel became a nation in one day, May the 14th, 1948, and it has been fighting wars for survival ever since that day. It is a dangerous thing to speculate on prophecy or interpret prophecy incorrectly. So I humbly speculate concerning the future events that affect us. There will be a war very soon as described in Ezekiel 38 and 39 with Israel against Russia, Iran, Turkey, and other nations. And in this war, Almighty God will fight for Israel with an earthquake, with fire and hail falling from the sky. God will turn the weapons of the enemies against each other 
and burn the nations that attack Israel with fire. Almighty God will shake apart those old mosques, old churches, and old houses in Jerusalem. The Temple Mount will be renovated by an earthquake, and the Dome of the Rock will collapse and slide downhill in a pile of rubble. Israel's enemies will be destroyed and unable to prevent the construction of the new temple on the Temple Mount. The priest will soon begin the sacrifices in the new temple, and the Antichrist will arise as the rest of the world recovers from the earthquake, the plagues, the starvation, the many wars with each other. Please consider these things as I read some of the prophecy in Ezekiel 38 and 39. The Lord said, Ezekiel, Son of man, condemn Gog, that wicked ruler of the kingdoms of Meshach and Tubal, in the land of Magog. Tell him, I, the Lord God, am your enemy, and I will make you powerless. I will put a hook in your jaw and drag you away, both you and your large army. You command cavalry troops that wear heavy armor and carry shields and swords. Your army includes soldiers from Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, as well as from Gomer and Beth Targumma in the north. Your army is enormous. So keep your troops prepared to fight, because in a few years I will command you to invade Israel, a country that was ruined by war. It was deserted for a long time, but its people have returned from their foreign nations where they lived once. The Israelites now live in peace in the mountains of their own land. But you and your army will attack them like a fierce thunderstorm and surround them like a cloud. When that day comes, I know that you will have an evil plan to take advantage of Israel, that weak and peaceful country where people live safely inside towns and have no walls or gates or locks. You will rob the people in towns that was once a pile of rubble. These people lived as prisoners in foreign nations, but they have returned to Israel, the most important place in the world, and they own livestock and property. The people of Sheba in Duran, alongside the merchants from the villagers in southern Spain, will be your allies. They will want some of the silver and gold, as well as livestock and property that your army takes from Israel. I, the Lord God, know that when you see my people Israel living in peace, you will lead your powerful cavalry from your kingdom in the north. You will attack my people like a storm cloud that covers the land. I will let you invade my country Israel so that every nation on earth will know that I, the Lord, am holy. The Lord said to God, long ago I had my prophets warn the people of Israel that someday I would send an enemy to attack them. You, God, are that enemy. And that day is coming. When you invade Israel, I will become furious. And in my anger, I will send a terrible earthquake to shake Israel. Every living thing on earth will tremble in fear of me. Every fish and bird, every wild animal and reptile, and every human. Mountains will crumble, cliffs will fall, and cities will collapse. The Lord will make the mountains of Israel turn against you. Your troops will be so terrified that they will attack each other. I will strike you with diseases and punish you with death. You and your army will be pounded with rainstorms and hailstones and burning sulfur. I will do these things to show the world that I, the Lord, am holy. The Lord said, Ezekiel, son of man, condemn Gog and tell him, You are the ruler of Meshach and Tubal, but I, the Lord, am your enemy. I will turn you around and drag you from the north until you reach the mountains of Israel. I will knock the bow out of your left hand and the arrows out of your right hand, and you and your army will die on those mountains. Then birds and wild animals will eat the flesh of your dead bodies left lying in the open fields. And I, the Lord, have spoken. I will set fire to the land of Magog and to those nations along the seacoast that think they are so secure, and they will know that I am the Lord. My people Israel will know me, and they will no longer disgrace my holy name. Everyone on earth will know that I am the Holy Lord God of Israel. The day is coming when these things will happen, just as I have promised. When that day comes, the people in the towns of Israel will collect weapons of their dead enemies. They will use the shields, bows, and arrows, spears, and clubs as firewood, and there will be enough to last for seven years. 
They will burn these weapons instead of gathering sticks or chopping down trees. That's how the Israelites will take revenge on those who robbed and abused them. I, the Lord, have spoken.